Hello, Paul here, and I want to show you how you can make something simple like a candle holder, but you could do so much with this process that I'm just about to show you. In fact, we're going to start off with this 3D panel, and from here I'm going to make a mesh from a preset. So you have all these basic shapes, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a cylinder. Okay, so selecting cylinder, clicking create, and here's my cylinder. So all in all, I want to select scene, or I can select current view, and I can start to rotate this around. And this is really going to be my candle holder. It's going to sit inside, and then I'm going to add some graphics uh, on the outside. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the size. So selecting cylinder, going into the properties panel. If I select the second option, you can see the sizes. In fact, I want to change this to inches. Okay, and if I just do a Command H or Control H if you're on a PC, you can see the sizes down here. It's basically 11 inches wide. This thing is really huge. Well, you can scale it uniformly just by dragging that down. I'm only going to make it like maybe 4 inches wide roughly, which is actually plenty, so 3-ish, uh, 3.8. And that's the size I want. I'm going to move it to the ground. There it is. And uh, I will just kind of reposition uh, this view, if you will. So selecting current view, I'm going to zoom in on this object and move it into position like that. So here's my object. It's this cylinder. And first thing I need to do is uh, I need to pop the top off, if you will. So notice how I twirl this down. I have the cylinder material, the top, and then the bottom material. And for the top material, I don't want that to be white. I want it to be transparent. So I'm gonna go in here to the opacity. Okay, and from here, I'm gonna create a new texture. This new texture doesn't matter really what size. I'm just going to make sure that the width and height are square, about 72 pixels per inch. So I've created that texture. Now I can select Edit Texture. And whatever I draw here in black will actually be transparent. So all I really need to do is just invert that color from white to black. I'll close it. And you can see I've popped the top off of it. And uh, in fact, we could even look inside if we want to. Now let's add some fun designs around the cylinder. So that's going to be the cylinder material. And I want to do the same thing, which is create a new texture for that cylinder material. This one, I want the height to be about 300 and the width is going to be about 1,000 because, again, we're going to wrap it all the way around, something like that creating it and then editing it. Okay, so here's my uh, blank canvas, if you will. And now I can have fun uh, creating whatever I want here. And in this case, I'll just type in a word light. Okay, one thing I want to keep in mind is I don't want to have an O because that will be, it'll basically mean that, that uh, the center of the O will not print out. But since this G here, it's connected, then notice how we're going to have one solid piece. And then saving that and going back out here, sure enough, you can see that it does say light and you can see right through it. So it's going to cast very cool light outside of this cylinder. And I can always change the size. So if I come back in here and I decide I want to change the height down to about four, I can do that, moving it to the ground like that. And there we have it. So I encourage you to just have fun. So selecting scene, going to the 3D print settings. And at this point, I could choose Shapeways or Sculptio and just kind of check out all the different materials. So if I take a look right in here, brass, bronze, ceramic, silver, all that good stuff. But really what I want to do is I'm ultimately going to print it out in steel. But this is what I'm going to do. I want to change this to local because I want to export out this object. So I'm going to change it to local. And then for my printer, I'm just going to export out an STL file. And then I could pick the material later on Shapeways site. So export STL high quality for the detail level. The surface detail, the opacity, I want to make sure that's checked because that's what I'm doing. Clicking print right down here. It will go through and Photoshop repairs the meshes, make sure the walls are thick enough, make sure it's going to be a successful print. And then from there, I just upload to Shapeways. 
And here it is, the preview. And as you can tell, you can see right through it. You can see the letters on the inside facing out. That's where the light's going to come from. And you'll notice two different colors because not only do we have green of the original mesh, but we have where the walls were thickened. Okay, so Photoshop does do that thickening for you. So it's going to be the right thickness when it gets printed out. So from there, just export out that file to your desktop. And then from there, you can go to the Shapeways site and log in, then upload your file. So this is the STL file. Upload it. All right, here it is, uploaded to Shapeways. You get a preview of it right here. And as you scroll down, you'll see the different materials. You can see the prices right here. And this is all dependent upon the amount of material that's being used in the machine space. So since this is pretty large, you can see the price is going to be up there as well. So um, be mindful of that, but also know that you can change the material at any time. You can jump into stainless steel, uh, even get into some precious metals, which you can see right here. It's so big, it's too big for these printers. So I encourage you to scale it down have Shapeways printed out and they will send it to your house in the material that you choose.